All right, I've got seven. Let's move the agenda. Um, I'm going to note that everyone is present with the exception of Mr. Wood. And first item is fee schedules for fireworks. Ricky, that's got your name next to it. Public what do you know? know? What did you learn? No oh, I'm sorry. Public comment. Jumped right over and it's right here for that purpose. Yeah, I'm Chuck I know. <laughs> I do have something I'd like oh, to say. Oh, good. Um, I noticed that tonight you're going to discuss the sale of the Katyville property. Or yes. Katyville Park up portion. Yeah. Um, when the town purchased that last year um, for $290,000, um, supervisor said that he had a plan. Yes, he does. It does. It does. Whereby the purchase would cost the taxpayers nothing. That's the plan. Okay. Well, that plan hasn't come to fruition yet. It's not dead either. No, it's not dead. However, the taxpayers are paying, and that could or may or may not come to fruition. And I checked the cost of the, the price on the property, and it's really not enough to um, pay for the bond anymore. Which it's 295 and when you pay the bond and the cost associated with the realtor and so on and so forth, that doesn't really cover the um, cost. Not here or there, but anyway. Um, I noticed that in Mel's letter, she suggests that the town consider selling an unproductive part of the Katyville Park. Not a bad idea. But using the money for future recreation projects. And I have to disagree with that assessment. I think that since there has been no forthcoming money from the plan, that that money should first be considered to go to mm -hmm. pay off the bond and then if there's, you know, whatever. I'm sure that's day. what we would do. I mean, Yay. the idea is the property on 9 South would be able to be sold to pay it all. It hasn't sold yet. We did have a, I mean, it's negotiations for the sale of property, so I have to be careful, but sure. uh, we do have a gentleman who did make a deposit Good. and had a very uh, strong interest. We were uh, discussing the price, and, and uh, you know, I, I remain optimistic, obviously. I mean, it's, it's business, always so. a toss-up, and so That's I'm right. just saying, you know, in order to start to pay down that debt, any proceeds should maybe be put towards the, um, towards the, the debt, and that would keep the town in line with Mr. <coughs> Coffey's assessments of so, uh, solvency and, and, you know, all that stuff. Yep, yeah, that, absolutely. Okay. I mean, our assumption, again, would be that uh, the other property would sell, and that would help us with programs. So obviously, if it doesn't, pay, paying that off is number one. Indeed. Yeah. You know, that's why I just, I was we a little may, concerned yeah. when she we said, well, let's use it to play with, you may know. We some of those chairs out there before this is over. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but that, no, that's, I, I mean, I, I have no problem entertaining because there are lots of things in the world of uh, parks and recreation that still like to do. And I, I think that's important to have those goals, but obviously you got to pay your bills first. Um, and I haven't, I, I, I'll share with the board, I haven't had... Uh, an update. Um, when I gave a counter offer, they did not refuse. The uh, prospect actually did make a deposit, so they had some serious interest. Uh, there were some concerns with the um, ability to build on there and access, which we know. We've discussed that. And uh, I expected the prospect was going to, he lives out of the state, uh, that he was going to come and do a uh, site walk, which is expected uh, to happen fairly soon. So, kind of, I, I'm still optimistic, but if, if not, there have been other uh, interested parties. But this one actually put some money down, so we'll see where that's at. But no, I don't think anybody's going to argue with anything of any significance uh, has got to be put toward paying that bond. Mm -hmm. That is number one. Okay. Thank you. You're, you're, you're very welcome. It's a good question. Uh, any other comments from anyone? This evening? Okay. Then I will move. Thank you, Gerard, for bringing that to my attention. I get tunnel vision some days. Uh, Ricky, back to fee schedules. What did you learn? Uh, okay. After sampling <coughs> all of the bigger towns and the areas around us, between Fort Edward, Queensbury, Saranac Lake, uh, that, that, the average on move, they've been charging $250 for a firework permit. And then it goes down, some, some go down.
down to twenty five dollars. The smaller towns and stuff. They don't have like so Queensbury, Fort Edwards, Lake George and all of that are consistent. They charge two fifty fireworks. And Cernak Lake is two fifty. Saranac Lake is 250. 250. And Saranac Lake is, is one of the only ones that that uh, that has a requirement onto it. They charge according to if it's going to be done in water, uh, if it's done in Mirror Lake or any of that stuff up there. There's a different charge for it. Is it more or less if it's over the water? It's more uh, because of the exposure for the area or something like that. Onto it. And they require a five million dollar liability. Five million dollars. And they also it, it gives the the size of the mortars, if it's got a special mortar, if it's hazardous, if it's offset, or that, that, all of this other side. Do we ever really gather that kind of information from the person producing the fireworks in the town? Um, I, I don't recall. Oh, well, this is this is under permit application. Mm -hmm. It's a distance of outdoor aerial shells, states maximum, minimum separation, spectators for uh, for land or water displays, and you get, you get the size, and then they go up on the roof. Did you get any ideas, Rick, for uh, changes you might want to do on our application by looking at some what, of those? It seems to me that the, the bigger areas like ours and stuff, that, that they are at least charging the... the 250 or, or something onto it because of the, the amount of work that has to go into it. That's what they said. If it's going to be continual, you know, like the whole summer months that they have and they have all of these different celebrations and stuff because they have to, <coughs> to control it. And a lot of them now are backed up by their, their uh, fire marshal. Sets the regulations onto it where the town does it. The fire marshal says you have to have this, 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 and this, and you pay the town. Now the permit is good for each fireworks show, or is it well, similar this, this period one of time? says it's an application it's must be completed by a non-refundable annual application fee of two hundred and fifty dollars. This is for four. But does that allow them to have one fireworks display or any number all year during uh, the period? It doesn't say. Because that would be kind of key. How many right. shots do I get for that permit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, having one if you're having one every Friday night and it's two fifty, that's a little different than two fifty for one. Or if you're having um, one if you're having one pyrotechnics expert or whatever doing five different yeah. displays Blades. in five different locations. Yeah. yeah. Does one permit cover all of those? Right, because if you if you consider the town, you could have one at airborne. Speedway, then you could have somebody over at the Clinton County Fair, you could have somebody over, over at here Legion, the Legion, and you could have somebody. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you could have one vendor <coughs> go in to, and make contract with individual groups. The vendor gets his permit from the municipality and then goes and does it. But we do it such that each group has to have their vendor get a permit. Mm -hmm. So um, we should come up with a recommendation given our circumstances, which are each event has to have a permit. Each uh, vendor has to come to the town and can't do a blanket permit. Mm -hmm. I think uh, an event ought to be limited to 24 hours to I agree. Do we have something right. like that now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It states date and time. Yeah. yeah I mean, like somebody can't go on if it's two days. Right. right. Well, it says rain date. Okay. They, would, they would give you the next day. Okay. But after that, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So it's if you paid uh, $50 for a permit and you want to do it every other Friday, that would be separate permit. Right. Yep. What's your recommendation, Rick? I would say at least, I would, you know, anywhere between 150 and 250. I know there have been years you, uh, well, I we mean, had several of us chasing in, chasing the insurance. Exactly, because you got to coordinate with the state police, sheriff's department, fire departments, ambulance people, 
everybody's going to be notified of the date and the time and what it is, and you're going to get everything. I think, I think the key question is, every time there's a display, you're involved in some way. As far as as far as contacting, I, I have to go to physically. So there's go. so there's there's the employee's time involved, in, and that's what we're looking at the the fee for the permit for is to cover the cost of the employee. And you go to the state I, police. I you go, go to, to the, the state police. I go to the sheriff's department. I go to the fire department. <coughs> I go to the ambulance service. Okay. I get everybody to sign off on. Anyone else have thoughts about a recommendation for a number? I think the number ought to be in two fifty mm -hmm. nine or ten. I agree. So we want to wrap that in as a 250, Rick, and we'll work toward uh, setting that by resolution. We don't have a draft for that, do we, at this point? I don't know so. so we need a draft resolution. <coughs> Maybe we can find something and use that as a template if Deborah are working on that. Well, that's that's the, this is the that's state one? Yeah. All right, anyone have any other conversation, thoughts about that topic? Next thing we'll do then is work on a draft resolution. The, the, the key that we want to look for on certain things like this now, we began the process this year, is noting that the fee, the charges may be adjusted by resolution. So we have that ability to periodically review, make change, and keep it out of the law as in this instance. Uh, the next item was a Parks and Rec publication. I don't know, you did get one. Um, this is a, and, and I don't know, I mean, it's not my business, but this is a trade magazine. This is an official publication for New York State Recreation Parks. And uh, I was pleased. I've been prodding Mel quite a bit in the last few months. And she's, she's got it now, I think, to let us know. We don't know if she doesn't tell us you know, what's going on, what the programs are, et cetera. And, and this particular article, I don't know if she marked in yours. Um, when you go into what's page 9, uh, this article, the first article, was all Town of Plattsburgh. It's our course. And uh, most of you probably know Joe Dupree, who recently retired. That's his daughter uh, throwing the disc on page nine. Uh, it's really good marketing and advertising. You know, kudos for us in our department. We've got a course that uh, is really getting some, some wide recognition. Uh, and, and you've had other emails relative to that. But she also went on and underscored, at least in mine, uh, what are some of the economic impacts? And we were, we were having a conversation about that earlier. Um, these things are nice. The private sector may make money on the charges and fees and selling their product. What does it bring to the town? And uh, it isn't always direct, but as we have groups coming in there, there are tournaments up there. You know they're stopping at Harrigan's for an ice cream cone when it's over, or grabbing a Michigan, and some of them are staying in the hotels. And again, it's not direct, but this is another pretty small, but another example of uh, what happens with sales tax, if nothing else. I noticed Cable Golf now sells official discs. It's a little bit of sales tax, you know, every little bit, but it also what builds the community. What does it cost? Why? Um, they're not charging anything at this point. Yeah. See, they're, they're, they're saying the median income is of the people who play. Yeah, seventy-five thousand a year. Pretty good. I think they can pay. <laughs> <laughs> the monitoring that is probably as yeah <laughs> as tough as anything. I remember going to Port Kent to golf. I haven't been there in a long time. There was a box, <coughs> and you throw your money in the box. Honor box. And you can imagine how many times the box, you know, somebody just didn't have the right change that day. I'll catch you next time. Uh, and that is an issue, you know. What, what do we pay to have someone stand there and gather a fee? Um, but but, but there is a residual benefit. Yeah. I, but I think as we've had lots of conversations that <clears throat> Mel and the, and the REC program is doing some really fantastic things, but as we continue to investigate time and resources, we need to manage um, tapping into the pay to play where it's appropriate yeah. and you know there's lots of things that we do in society that we are expected to 
get permits and so on and so forth, and it doesn't necessarily mean that someone's there to monitor our behavior all the time. So if we have the sign that says, you know, must have a permit or must have a tag or must have a, you know, I think there's a fair amount of people that will do it because it's, it's putting a value on it. It's amazing how sometimes... There, there are also a lot of people who are very generous if you put up a box asking for donations towards the maintenance and upkeep of the, of yeah. the course. Um, nobody who plays this expects that the course stays like that on its own. And there, so, and there are a lot know, of folks that are, that are uh, cleaning the trails with Mal and you know a variety mm -hmm. of things too. So there's a lot of volunteer labor that's going into it. But I think we need to continue to explore creative opportunities to get people to buy in as a community. Um, and there's lots of folks that are coming from, you know, out of the town, mm -hmm. you know, to come and play. There's one, I think, down <coughs> in Sable, um, yes. and there, I think, that, yeah, and, and you're paying, I think, five bucks a head to play. Yeah. So, yeah. Mel noted in her article that track where the players came from found that they had visited from 24 different states and two Canadian provinces. Yes. I, I think the other thing, too, is that I think, uh, in addition to sometimes they're collecting money, I think it's important to have a mindset of solvency. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the mindset sometimes the end of free is that being free yeah. and not free. And trusting. And that we know from you know our rating with the comptroller that we have to be careful. And you know, I, I, <coughs> I've often struggled with how do you monitor it? If you have a box of cash out there, you're gonna lose it. Yeah. And as soon as people know yeah. there's a box sitting out in the woods with cash, it won't you know, people break into the rectory of a church to get some money. Sure. Uh, but one of the things you just mentioned Mike, uh, might be worth pursuing a little is I, I visualize that we've all been to those parking lots that have the machines. And you swipe or put your coin in and you get a little ticket that comes out and you put it on your dash. Uh, a little like the scheme where they, maybe they could do that. We have somebody at the end of the day goes through, collects whatever's in there and you just the tag on your belt or whatever. You know, periodically you could have a parks and rec person go through and just check to make sure everybody's tagged, having a good time. And that, that might be manageable. Possibly. I think there is, I, I mean, for me it's it's rolling it back to its simplest form. I think of a lot of athletic uh, programs have booster clubs. And what you do is you pay your five dollars, you get your little sticker, you stick it in your car window, you you, know, you stick it on your bag, you do, you do whatever. If this is becoming a, a source of pride for a community, and it's not becoming, it is, uh, let me correct it there, um, people are going to be willing to um, show it. And I think that's where we begin. And then as we build build it up, yeah, maybe there is some type of, you know, little swipe or key or, you know, because town hall isn't open all the time. So if you have somebody from out of the region and they want to we play can, for the weekend, we it's just yeah. work. But it's, it's, it's challenging to come up with a method that, you know, a stable like the KOA isn't bad. In order to get to the course, you've got to go through the ticket breath, go into the park, so there's somebody there. Uh, th this is tough because of the meaning. But um, it's, nonetheless, it's a good thing. We had uh, grant money from <coughs> most, if not all of this. Uh, certainly our labor and maintenance, it, it isn't 100% free, but we don't have much investment either. Uh, but it's also good press. Um, I'm just amazed at the amount of people that play it. I mean, I, I was there the other night, and there was a husband and wife and two kids, and he, they had all had double backs, but with their own distance. Sure. I you know, thousand said, well, players well, a well, day. Said, we enjoy this. We there's Vermont, New Hampshire. We mm -hmm. go here, there, and he said, I, I really got hooked on it after watching it on television. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about opening a business and renting out diffs, disc golf carts for the, for the people who want to walk the course. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's the story on that. We, uh, I'm sure, will continue to yeah. We're continuing to segue uh, to the town's finance committee. We have one appointment as of now. Uh, Mr. Carpenter, who has a term to expire 12-31-19. Uh, we have uh, <coughs> three other names that we all agreed upon, and four names actually uh, in there. They're, they're kind of uh, listed in my list anyway as we had the names submitted. And I would just encourage whoever had the contacts uh, 
when you follow up with them, they say if appointed they would serve, then we'll go through with the appointment. I don't want to go through a resolution unless we're sure that people are here. Can we ever talk to Brian or Jim? I, I wanted to give you an update on that. Um, let me go back and then go back to Brian. Uh, Carolyn Rigger is a yes. Um, oh, good. In regards to Brian, I did have a conversation with him initially. And then as some of you, and I was going to say this for later, um, my stepfather passed away. So um, with the week leading up to it, things were kind of dicey. So he and I need to connect. Um, I left him a note. We just we haven't done the appropriate um, phone tag and stuff like that. So I'm um, hoping to connect with him. And what he was he was the individual that requested, uh, do you have a date and a time kind of set? So hopefully we can move forward on the next couple of days with at least a up or down. Yeah, good. So I will work on the draft for Carol. There's no reason not to have that one uh, next Monday. Uh, the next item was the sale of Caneville property. Um, just again wanted to share, I, I made a note earlier today, we need to get a map uh, to go along with this. When you see the map, there's, there's, for lack of a better word, there's an extension or protrusion on the Route 3 boundary. If you drew a straight line, uh, to connect the endpoints of those protrusions, uh, it would identify a strip of property that uh, we feel is surplus, as indicated by Mel's letter, and would generate some revenue to put toward paying for the for the uh, property. Uh, we would like to, and I believe there's a draft resolution, uh, get authority to hire a surveyor. We've done an awful lot of Dean Lajway, he's a very good price, uh, we'll go out there and walk it with him, make sure we know what we're doing, and get that on the market as a whole, not subdivided into lots, so we don't want to get in that business, but just uh, subdivide that section off and uh, generate some room. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the property on 9, I, I really have no updates other than what I mentioned. Uh, I remain optimistic, but I have no money for that optimism. <laughs> so that's the scoop I have. If anybody has any thoughts, comments, or concerns, but we'll continue to intro and report. Uh, no one indicated anything with the draft on the minutes, so I guess that looks good. Ricky, that takes us right to a resolution that we need to pass this evening, number 232, to amend resolution 221. If we can get this on the table, I can explain further why this is here. So, resolution 231 should be first. 231, amending resolution number 221, tennis court resurfacing and repainting for Cumberland Head Everest Gravity Recreation Park. Resolution 14 221 was passed and needs to be amended. Whereas the price quote to maintain said course was inadvertently typed wrong according to the proposal submitted and needs to be amended to the submitted price of $8,699. Therefore, it be resolved that the town board does hereby authorize resurfacing, cleaning, repainting of the tenant's court by Vermont Tennis Court, resurfacing, post office box 6, St. Johnsbury, Vermont, 05819, in the amount of $8,699. And it is further resolved the supervisor be here to authorize to sign any and all related documents relative to the resurfacing and repairing of Everest Park to be made payable from the field maintenance account. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the finance manager, a copy be given to Mr. Five Youth Recreation Director. I have a motion. So Mr. Manning, second. Second. Mr. Cashman. Now, discussion. Um, what we did, and I, I sensed something was not right um, last Monday, but that wasn't quite the right time to be sure. I followed up Tuesday morning. The amount that we had was $14,114. And I thought, well, maybe that was for the two courts or something missing. There was nothing missing. What that represented was an amount on a similar resolution last year. We simply didn't have the right amount for this one. I don't want a resolution out there that, I mean, this amount's less than you approved, but it's the wrong number. We should have a resolution with the right number. Uh, and that's why this is here. The amount is not 14,000, whatever. It is 8,699. 
Any questions, comments, concerns with that? If not, have a roll call, Rick. Uh, Mark Mannix? Yes. Michael Cash? Yes. Yes. Yes, that resolution passes. We have another one this evening. Um, our highway department is very anxious to move on this, and more anxious than them is the municipality that would like to benefit from the sale. Resolution 232, Commission to sell a, an A2000 Woods Moor to another municipality. As normal municipality in <coughs> town to periodically update vehicles and equipment used to maintain roads in the town of Boston. Whereas the highway department has a 2000 Woods Moor that is no longer needed and has become surplus equipment. And whereas the town of Blackbrook now wishes to purchase said Moor from the town of Boston Highway Department. Whereas the town board has considered such requests and acknowledges the 2,000 woods more is surplus and needs to be replaced. Therefore, we resolve that the highway superintendent is hereby authorized to make said sale to the town of Blackbrook for an agreed price of $1,000, and it be further resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized to sign any and all related documents required to the sale. And it is further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the budget officer Finance manager and highway system. Have motion. So moved. Mr. Cashman, second. Second. Mr. Renner. Any discussion? Um, I've removed the word budget officer from there. There's a little bit of redundancy. Uh, Mike and Gerard, are you okay with that yes. as an amendment? Anything else? I just wanted to point out that in Jim's letter, he says that that $1,000 is the price of the trade allowance. Mm -hmm. Right. So we would have got much more than that anyway. No, if, if that. Roll call. Um, Mark Mannix? Yes. Michael Cashman? Yes. Yes. Yes, that resolution carries as well. It's kind of a nice, another nice version of sharing services. Um, you've got a draft. I'm going to break the pattern just a little bit here. Um, you've got a draft resolution for the uh, acceptance of Freedom Drive as a town road. Uh, that would uh, we'd review it tonight and a week from tonight it would be passed and then after that uh, we would work on uh, officially uh, taking the road over, doing filings. Uh, I thought about this since we did that. We had this conversation earlier. Um, the planning department's approved, our highway department has done their review, everything's in place. I just wonder what the advantage would be, uh, why we would wait another week. It's another week that a family anticipating buying a home, getting closing, getting in. Uh, it just seems to be slowing business down for no benefit that I can think of. Um, so uh, with the assumption you've had some time to review this, I would offer that we name this one uh, Resolution 234. Uh, the other thing was wrong, I believe. The uh, draft resolution on our sheet, you had 32 for the resolution uh, amending. It yep. should have been 31. That's 31. It's wrong on the agenda. So this one should be 233. So I, I suggest, for the sake of enabling things to move along and business to be done <coughs> in a timely fashion this time of year, uh, that we act on this now instead of Monday. We don't have a problem with that. If not, Rick, could you make that one? Number 233. Yep. And it is Heritage Heights Subdivision Phase 5, 2013, lots 71 through 73, and lots 80, 81, dedication of road utilities. Whereas the Town of Plaster Planning Board has reviewed and approved the Heritage Heights Subdivision Phase 5, 2013, lots. 71 through 73 and lots 80 and 81. And whereas Heritage Heights Subdivision Phase 5, 2013 lots 71 through 73 and lots 80 to 81, has submitted a deed for conveyance of the improvements to the town representing approximately 586 plus feet or minus of new public road related water, sanitary sewer, and street light storm drain and turnaround improvements. Whereas the town highway superintendent, water and wastewater director, building and grounds director, and planning department have conducted and or supervised 
on-site inspection of the constructive improvements and submitted letters dated December 6, 2013, December 20, 2013, and December 30, 2013, respectively, recommending the acceptance and dedicated such improvements to the new road extension, and whereas the application applicant is required to prepare a final warranty deed to the town of Potsford for the new road and improvements constructed in a subdivision conveying, conveying 586 feet extension of new road identified as Freedom Drive in which the road name has been verified with 911 emergency service and U.S. Postal Service. Whereas the applicant shall be required to place with the town a one-year road and utilities warranty deposit for the road and utilities dedication in the amount of $2,930 uh, at 586 feet at $5 per foot equals $2,930. Whereas the applicant is required to provide a check or cash <coughs> to the town of Plattsburgh in the amount of $9,000 for the cost of Type A6 top coat asphalt to be installed by the highway department within five years following the acceptance of Sud Road. And said check or cash shall be provided to the town upon acceptance of the road as per town resolution 14217. Whereas the applicant is required to provide a check or cash in the amount of $222.14 per coat associated with the traffic lights controlled and installed on Freedom Drive by the Town Highway Department as detailed in the Town Highway Superintendent's letter dated November 7, 2013. Whereas the Town Planning Board has determined that Heritage Heights Subdivision Phase 5, 2013, Lots 71 through 73 and Lots 80 and 81 has completed all necessary improvements and complied with the, with the Planning Board's conditions and approval. Whereas the Town Planning Department has recommended the Town Board authorize the release of said project's 3% construction deposit in the amount of $3,518.55 plus accrued interest to date, and whereas the applicant has requested that the $3,518.55 plus accrued interest currently held in escrow with the town be applied to the $2,930 one year road and utilities warranty, the meaning balance to be applied to the $9,000 type 6 coat asphalt cost. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town board receives and placed on file. The town superintendent, the highways, water and wastewater director, building and grounds director, planning department. <coughs> Letters dated December 6, 2013, December 20th, 2013, December 30th, 2013, respectively, recommending the acceptance and dedication of the set improvements and a new road extension. It is further resolved that the town of Plattsburgh Town Board does hereby upon the final warranty deed being found acceptable by the town attorney accept the dedication of 586 plus or minus feet binder top road identified as Freedom Drive as a public town road. And it be further resolved that the town board, town of Blackford, does authorize the town planning attorney to review of the said deed and upon his review and acceptance authorize the recording of the final warranty deed in the Clinton County Clerk's Office which conveys approximately 500 86 feet plus or minus of new road with public water line, sanitary store, street lights, storm drainage, turnaround, and other related improvements as shown in the subdivision final plans of the Heritage Heights subdivision phase 5, 2013 lots 71 to 73 and lots 80 to 81. And to be further resolved that the town board is hereby authorized the energizing of satellite street lights which are located in the general lighting district, district. And it be further resolved that the developer be required to place in the town a one-year road and utilities warranty deposit for the road and utilities dedication in the amount of $2,930 at 586 feet at $5 per foot, $2,930. Or $2, and to be further resolved that Heritage Heights subdivision Phase 5, 2013, lots 71 and 73 and lots 80 and 81 shall provide a check or cash to the town of Plattsburgh in the amount of $9,000 for the cost of type 6 top coat asphalt to be installed 
by the town highway department within five years following the acceptance of said road, and said check or cash shall be provided to the town of Foxburg upon acceptance of said road. And it be further resolved that the town board has authorized and transferred the application of the 3% construction deposit in the amount of $3,518.55 plus accrued interest to the $2,930 one-year warranty deposit satisfying the one-year warranty deposit and further refine the remaining balance to the $9,000 type 6 asphalt top coat. And it be further resolved the applicant shall provide a check or cash for the remaining balance of type 6 asphalt top coat cost. And it be further resolved that the applicant shall provide a separate check or cash in the amount of $222.14 for the cost associated with the traffic control signs installed on Freedom Drive by the Town Highway Department, as detailed in the Highway Superintendent's letter dated November 7, 2013. I have a motion. So moved. Mr. Manning, second. <coughs> Mr. Cash, discussion. Um, one item, Bernie, in the results on that same page, we mentioned the town planning attorney. I don't believe we have a town planning attorney anymore. The deputy attorney. Yes. Okay. We, we haven't used that phrase much, uh, but yes, it would be a deputy attorney at CJ. Yeah, it's not the planning attorney. Uh, I would like to amend it to uh, indicate that. Is that all, all right with you, Marty and Mike? Uh -huh. Yep. So we will no matter how many times you read something, sometimes when you hear Ricky read it, you, you, you notice something that you missed. Can we have him read it again? <laughs> I, 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 I was thinking the same thing. I, especially those lot numbers. I don't I think just, I got those yet. I love the cadence. <laughs> 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 Okay. As to read it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussions? Come. You know, I was thinking as Ricky's reading it, all the steps yet to be achieved, and we're going to delay the start of it another week for what reason? Yeah, it takes a week to read it. <laughs> Good. Anyone have anything else? Welcome. Mark Mannix. Yes. Michael Cashman. Yes. Brad Reynolds. Yes. Bernie Bassett. Yes. Resolution carries. That's a good thing. All right, going back to, we had a building and grounds report. If anyone had any thoughts, questions, comments, I can try to answer them. And I have encourage, as much as I've encouraged departments to use their counselors who are on committees, I encourage you anytime, throw an email to someone, you know, let them know you're reading these, have any questions, it's good for them. Uh, we also have a draft from our codes and zoning. A uh, number of new projects continue to surface. Uh, I don't know who I might have missed, but I think it was last, I think it was last Monday, the final requirements for the permit for the Marriott Fairfield Inn, Fairfield Inn across the road on Route 3 from uh, the Hampton actually was completed. A very interesting meeting here the week well, prior to that, and uh, uh, within moments I realized the uh, new uh, partner slash clerk of the works was going to unravel the issues, and he did. It was amazing how you know you can you can suddenly get in the room the people that have to be in the room to get an issue, and it got resolved. Of course, that group uh, initially went to uh, Mayor Cownan and began talking about the <laughs> issue before he realized that he wasn't getting a new hotel sent to my way. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was uh, we're going forward. It, I, I, and more optimistic than ever. In fact, I haven't noticed. I know I've been by there. I don't think they started. But they are very anxious to get back on. And, and I think that's a good thing. It's a good thing for the people who have jobs there. It's good for the tax base. It's good for the traveler. We give them another option. And I think it's good for the hotels that are here because, as we <coughs> talked earlier, it just creates more attraction. It's all good. Uh, we have our town clerk's monthly report. I don't know if there's anything there, Rick, you want to highlight? Actually, I don't have a town clerk report. Do we? Yeah. yeah. Mine's out of order. 
Let it down to six hundred ninety-two dollars and eighty-five cents. Over the share of tax. Clerk's report card admitted. Clicked with my code report. How's that compared to previous years? More. I've been hearing the beach is much busier. More this year. We've had more of it apart. Could be. And um, great escape tickets? No, we're not selling them. We're not doing them at all this year? No, no, because we couldn't compete with the prices that Price Chopper and the Credit Union. There's six other places now selling them. And they're selling them up. A dollar less than we're paying for. So be it. Yep, yep. That's what Melody works for Melody me. came to me and she yeah. said, it, it's not, I can't lose a dollar just to sell the tickets no. to some people. No. Yep, good. Last year we spent quite a few hours trying to unravel that. Yes. Anyone else? Anything for Ricky? Um, water wastewater monthly report <coughs> follows that. Um, I think you had all heard from Scott, they're continuing to make progress and very optimistic now about the uh, well on off Tom Miller Road. That's what I missed. Don't know if you saw the sign at May Courier, by the way, that uh, I think <coughs> looks great. Yeah, nice nice. Reflects <coughs> nicely on us, keeps the theme going. Um, and we have authorization to retain the services of a surveyor. I've made a note on the draft resolution that I'd like a map fixed to this so we have a sense of what property we're talking about. That will surface next uh, Monday. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question on that very mm -hmm. that, that area, uh, how is that area zoned? That's a good question. Is I'm it going to guess it's R1 residential. Or R2? I don't know. Does, is that served by public water? I don't believe. Oh, I thought there was public water up the Garo Road. No, no sewer, no sewer, sewer water. water, and so no it gas. It could be, it could be R1, could be R1, or it could be R2. And I don't could know. It's a good question. Because I can see if you're going to sell uh, a strip of land, I could, I could see where somebody might want to buy it and come in and and do some decent apartments. Oh, sure. In the area. And and that strip along Route Three does have gas, fiber. Yes. No. And that would make, believe me, that would make apartments there cheaper than apartments in the city of Glassburg. Percolation test for sewer talk should Talk to a, uh, with a, a developer who has done a lot of developing in the, in the city, and he is now looking to develop mm -hmm. in the town because of costs. What has happened to, uh, and he said it all comes down it, it all comes down to rent and the operational cost for the people who rent. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, there's a certain amount of money that people can afford to spend, period. And, and that's it. And he said, and that affects, you know, what they can pay for rent. And he said, your tax and the city's, city's tax rate uh, it's gone up again. Yeah. That'd be a nice location for apartments. Mm -hmm. Corrections officers. But gas, natural gas, natural gas, gas, right there is a, is a big, a big player. Is that in the franchise area? Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, that speaking of that, well, it's okay. You uh, we're hearing. We're, we're getting more news. We got more news. Good. I got a an email uh, from Jim Lyons today. Uh, yesterday in response to <coughs> my comments that I made to the Public Service Commission and he indicated the Public Service Commission was meeting on July 24th to act on this recommendation and the recommendation is the Public Service Commission recommendation not the nice thing uh, I did ask uh, 
couple other questions uh, that are very generic to that. I didn't get a response to that. But uh, after the 24th, we are led to believe we should be optimistic. We'll hear something. We should move fast after that. So we'll see. Hopefully, because uh, you know, Marty knows I, I talked to a, a, an individual who is building, sure. building a new house sure. on, in a development. And because there was no house there when the natural, I'm assuming this is what happened, because there was no house there when the subdivision was, was brought natural gas, that lot was excluded from the franchise territory. So he has literally has natural gas pipeline 25 feet from the front of his house, but he cannot get hooked up because he's not in the franchise area. Every other house in the subdivision is hooked up. And, and you he will not be. I give you a list of 300 that weren't in the franchise if area. We had done a water, if done water, if we had done a water service through that area, we'd have put a, t a tap on that empty lot. Right. Yep. Okay. But they didn't put, they didn't put, if you will, a tap on that lot. No. That's where getting the townwide franchise eliminates that argument <laughs> for them. Because everybody's in a frame. Right. I, I think that's a gimme. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll have some more Keep information fingers to come forth. You bet. Bernie, before we move past this draft, I think it's worthwhile to note um, clearly from the board's perspective the reason that we're having this land surveyed and the sale of the land is to go to support um, you know, the purchase of the Katyville Park. I mean, I, 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 recognize, I recognize Mel's. Um, letter and you know as the as the director of recreation she wants to see money is go towards yeah. recreation yeah. but we're going to um, you know and, and it clears up what might what might have been like was tonight confusing yes you know because the department head yeah. says that yeah. this is what we would be using the money for it doesn't and, and, necessarily and mean that's, that's, and that's, and that's not the case that's right. not no, the motivation and, behind and, this and, and I she understands that too Sure, uh, I'm just saying, completely. but our resolutions are the backup from the board, from the board's yep. perspective. Mm -hmm. That's it's, good. It's our good motivation, point. and it's a good footnote for us to move forward on. Yep. A point I want to make. Okay, a phrase was 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 a statement was made earlier tonight. You know, not you know that the money should be applied to reduce to reduce the the bond and not to be played with. This was not, you know, this was not to go play with it. Obviously, her focus is on developing the recreation program with within that property and, 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 and that's the job she's charged with and so that's you know it's totally responsible for her to, you know, to kind of have that mindset mm -hmm. but we have a different set of responsibilities and our first and foremost responsibility is, is you know to the fiscal side of the ledger in this town and you know we're going to do what we have to do <coughs> right. there well, and that's that'll get taken care of, and you know, then the resources will you know, we'll find a way ultimately to put the resources in place uh, to uh, to develop that property. Sure. And you know, I hope one of the things that we will do with that property and developing is is much of what was done in the past that we will find cooperative ways to develop that property. Uh, I mean, we're already working with, you know, through Mike with sure. uh, Plattsburgh State on a couple of ideas that will not cost, you know, the town literally anything of any significance and yet will add great function to uh, to some of that property. And as, as we all discussed when we were looking at the property and why it would be beneficial for the town to, to have it, is, is basically there's a lot of schools, there's a lot of groups, there's a lot of people who use that property. And if it were to become a pay for play, uh, you know, Saranac uses it for their for athletic events, cross country events, stuff like that. If there was a cost associated with it, again, that would help to go to pay down the debt for the property. There's no reason why the property should become a burden to the taxpayers if we have a vehicle by which we can we can make it sustainable. Yep, totally agree. That's a good idea. That actually puts in the resolution what the purpose and intent is. Good. Good, good, good. The next one is the authorization to retain general bond services. This is uh, kind of cookie cutter to what we've done multiple times. Uh, Ken Bond's been with us a long time. It should be noted we, we, we not always used Ken with the renewal of the bond for the cable property. We went local. 
and uh, used um, Joe Labarando uh, at a significant savings. But we had Ken obviously file that and make it part of his uh, documentation of the town's uh, assets and liabilities. So that's, that's uh, again, uh, a renewal. The base sewer lining project is uh, pretty clear. If you see anything there, let me know. This is getting at phase two. It's kind of nice to be in the phase two with that, really. Just closed phase one, we're getting the work done. Selling the application fee for a peddler's license. Um, this is one Ricky and I talked a bit right after we passed the local law. The piece that we didn't address was the uh, uh, fee for the license which we took out of the law, but there was an application, a non-refundable application fee. And Ricky has a copy of the um, application as well. Uh, my only suggestion on that was I would slug right in there rather than have a line. I would slug the fee and set until we change it, have a couple of these available so it doesn't look like the clerk's just kind of writing it in and making it up as he goes. But that, that's, uh, again, just a follow-up to what we've already done. The last one is consent to assign and change of control. Uh, this is a resolution that was given to me a little bit ago with a recommendation to have the board uh, pass it. The uh, negotiations with charter suddenly became a purchase of the uh, cable company by Comcast. I haven't been at the meetings. I think, Marty, you were at one or two. And, um, I don't think there have been a lot of them. Um, they got canceled. Uh, two different meetings were canceled that had been scheduled. So, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> and I, had a, I had a hallway meeting with uh, the former city clerk. And basically, uh, what is afoot uh, is we, we have an opportunity uh, to meet and to discuss exactly this issue. Uh, do we or do we not uh, pass such a resolution? Mm -hmm. uh, it's his recommendation that we go ahead and pass the resolution. Uh, and the advantage of doing that is if we pass this resolution, uh, which uh, extends the contract that we have with Charter. Uh, and it not only extends the contract, but it also extends the period. Currently, the contract with Charter is for a 10-year period. This would extend it but for a 15-year period. Comcast would be uh, on the line to honor that going forward for the next 10-year period, for the next 15-year period. Um, and that means they would have to abide by the terms of that uh, existing franchise agreement and the terms that, that Charter had agreed with us on. Uh, and it's clear that that's more favorable arrangement than what we would get if we were to be negotiating with Comcast. M Marty, are you able to attend the, their suggested meeting next Tuesday or Wednesday? Uh, I can, uh, but I need somebody to tell me which. I don't know. The, uh, the email, you know, do you I have don't that have an email? email. Okay, I forwarded to you today. Uh, I'll make a hard copy and get it to you. They're, they're wanting to have another meeting on Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. Um, I, I was pretty well tied up this afternoon in meetings, and so I, I probably didn't see that. Yep. Yeah. But I. And, and that's fine. I mean, e email isn't the perfect science either. I, I can make a copy of this. No, I probably got it right here in my phone. Okay. Um, one of the things that happened, and, and I was shooting a little bit from the hip, I've got the Comcast uh, documents. Of course, I've memorized and analyzed every word and phrase. Um, one of the things that surfaced in the town of Saranac, I, I don't know offhand who their participant was. It might have been... Joe, I'm not sure. I believe Joe has some reservations. He had some reservations over why go 15 years with Comcast uh, when we're not sure what we're getting into. 
And I underscored that in an email, and in this most recent one, why they're suggesting a meeting Tuesday or Wednesday is because the towns, quote, the towns of Cernak and Plattsburgh are hesitant to proceed because of that. Um, if it's the determination by the, the team that there's an advantage to locking Comcast into another five years of an agreement with Charter that's been as good as we can get, and I, I was part of the first one and the second one, I know uh, that got passed off to you, Marty. Uh, the first one was very difficult to work with Charter. Um, there seemed to be some real improvements on that. Yes, there was a change in the local uh, field management with Charter. That one guy they that sent was the guy who really was responsible when you wanted to try to get a, get a line extended or whatever. And uh, boy, it, it was the day and night since mm -hmm. they put a new guy in there. The person that we had to work with with Charter on a consulting, you know, on a negotiating level, a guy out of Boston, and he's been excellent all the way along. And I think he had a major hand in changing. Uh, who had the field responsibilities. But oh. if that made a big difference. Yeah. And I know that in Beatontown and in Peru, they were having significant problems and they were able to get those problems resolved very much to their satisfaction. Quite some time ago, Marty, there was, I'm guessing around 15 years ago, there, was, there were a lot of uh, franchise violations. We had some inspections that were done and Charter was called to task on, on a lot of that. I'm just wondering, are do we know if there's any deficiencies in, in their system that we're going to kind of ignore if we pass it along to Comcast, or is Comcast going to be held liable for any deficiencies in the system that they take over from Charter? I would expect I'd have to look. I'd have to look at the, there was a, a, a series of hearings that took place here in town uh, with testimony and the whole nine yards of, about deficiencies. There were dry wires that were supposed to have been attached that were just hanging and in this, they're going to be responsible for all the terms and conditions. Yeah, of they're the responsible for. Okay, they they uh, they were purchased by Comcast, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. what it looks like. Yeah. When you're purchase, when you buy a corporation, you're responsible. Yeah. I mean, okay. That's why sometimes you have asset purchases. So transfer transferring of the franchise doesn't doesn't uh, leave us holding the bag on. No. Liability. Or I should say the customers any things. more than you know the charter has, right. hasn't paid their phone bill or something. Maybe. I'd like to have Comcast come over and bury the cable that Charter never buried. I've got one outside mine. I left it the Probably. side, but it's just barely under the side. Big orange cable about three weeks ago. Yeah. Somebody came out and hooked the two boxes, left it yeah, on the ground. It on the ground. The they said, we'll be back, didn't they? Yeah. They told me that nine months ago. Yeah, there, there's, there's, Anyways. there are field staff sometimes which will be desired. Uh, Marty, the email that I sent was signed, let's meet with a K, that I thought was Keith, but it came from Sylvia Perry. Yes, I got it right here. Is Sylvia in the clerk's office now? She's the new clerk. And is Keith still involved with this? I believe I think Keith he is. is in a transi transitionary, transitional period there trying to bring her along and update yeah. her on what our stuff is. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's an approach that's mixing, it's meeting with mixed results in the city. And mm -hmm. you can get a couple of situations where uh, that's worked well and a couple of situations where it uh, <coughs> hasn't worked quite so well. And uh, they've uh, asked a couple of their longtime uh, people to step out much sooner than they thought they were going to be asked to step out. Well, I, I think the consent to assign and change control, I don't I don't think there's any disadvantage at all in okay. us passing that. Whether we execute it or not can certainly be subject to change and amendment, but it at least uh, puts us in a position to be uh, moving forward and cooperating to you know, get something done. So we, we might expect that. Marty, did you get a copy of their agreement as well? I got a feeling you didn't. No, I didn't. You were gone, I was gone. I think we just missed each other uh, somewhere along the line. So that's that. Um, I want to keep these with the, um, with the packet of stuff. There's really not a lot 
I, I copied and forwarded what I had to you in that email. So if you've got that, you're in good shape. I had sent an email to Keith on June on June 18th. I sent an email to Keith, letting him know I got the package, what was going on, and you know I had some concerns and wanted some updates, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that meeting next week is probably the a pivotal one. That's all I have, folks. What about the committee report, Barney? Um, the committee. I'm just joking. That's all, and, and I'm not when I leave it there because anytime the committee wants to give a report, I'm open to it. Let Jim read. <laughs> no. <laughs> I haven't been able to sleep well at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that said, I'm going to adjourn us. So I use my Mickey at 8 p.m. <laughs>